Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, hello, my name is Skylar. I am a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. Today we're going to be discussing whether or not you should be gifting pets as gifts this holiday season. Is it ever ethical? Is it ever responsible? Does it ever end up well? Is it really as horrible as people think? I will be hitting this from both sides of the coin here as both a pet professional, someone who has been working in the pet industry full-time for the last five or more years, as well as the grown-up version of the child that often got pets as gifts around the holiday season. Before we get too much further into this video, if you are new here and you have pets, you like pets, you want to learn more about dog training or pet nutrition, go ahead and subscribe to my channel down below. We're going to start off with the cons of gifting pets first to hopefully end this video up on a little bit of a higher note. But there are definite cons to gifting pets during the holidays, and it can really depend on both your intentions and your preparation when it comes to the gift giving. As a dog trainer, I definitely noticed an uptick in interest in my puppy socialization and puppy skills classes around January, because I recognize a lot of people do choose the holiday season to gift their family members, their friends, their children, their spouses, with a puppy or a newly adopted dog. I also know from my own experience that my first dog was given as a gift for Christmas. A lot of my pets that I had growing up were gifted as pets for Christmas and both of my sisters have gotten their cats adopted from the rescue around Christmas time. There are many reasons why this seems to be a trend. First, holiday season's kind of like the entry point into more of the bummer parts of winter. I don't know about you, but being in the dark all the time kind of starts to get on me a little bit. So after the holidays, there tends to be a little bit of a dip in morale as we kind of get through the rest of our cold, dark winters. During times like this, it's easy to feel more isolated, it's easy to want to reach out for more comfort, and it's easy to find that comfort and companionship in a new pet. Another reason why pets are gifted more often during the holiday season is because it's an impactful gift. If you're watching YouTube or television or listening to the radio, you've probably heard all of the car commercials that are blasting everywhere during the holiday season. Yes, there's a ton of other different types of commercials trying to sell you things, but I find car commercials are especially interesting because that's a big investment to just kind of surprise someone with. And while I certainly don't think that the companies are really intending for you to buy a car behind your spouse's back and surprise them with it, they're still creating this like idealized version of the holiday season in your brain where you need to spend more money, you need to make it a bigger deal, you need to really wow them. And this makes the responsibility of a new pet seem a little bit more manageable. Let's face it, in some people's eyes, gifting a pet for the holiday season seems a little bit more exciting and impactful than just a random Tuesday. And all of this is totally okay as long as you understand that there's a lot more that happens with that pet once December's over. If you work anywhere in the pet industry, whether it be you work in a pet store, you work at a shelter or rescue, you're a groomer, a vet tech, a dog trainer, whatever the case may be, you're probably used to a cycle that can happen when someone is underprepared for a pet, get it anyway, some time goes by where they usually get frustrated, they lose hope, and then something happens, usually ending in the pet getting rehomed or returned in some aspect. This cycle happens throughout the year, it's one of the unfortunate inevitabilities of working within the pet industry, but I do find it a lot more common coming out of December and kind of getting into the spring. To put it in an underprepared new pet owner perspective, I just got this puppy for Christmas. Puppies are very cute, puppies get into a lot of trouble, puppies can be a little bit more responsibility than even the most prepared person is wanting to admit sometimes. And so that can lead to frustration, it can lead to burnout, and it can hinder that bonding with a puppy that you maybe wanted, hopefully, were wanting and expressed that want. And then if the frustration becomes too much, there is that potential of rehoming or returning to a shelter or breeder. This is unfortunate for everybody involved. That underprepared pet owner likely has lasting frustration and guilt surrounding all of these events. The animal that was potentially returned now has to readjust to life outside of that home, may have picked up bad habits or bad associations in that whole process that is now going to be passed to somebody else. Generally speaking, older dogs or older cats 
are less adoptable than when they're really small cute puppies or kittens, and so that can affect things. And overall, it's just not an ideal situation for everybody. So how can we prevent this cycle from happening? As a professional, and someone who successfully, I would like to think, was gifted pets as a child, I find the number one thing that you want to look for if you're considering gifting a pet this holiday season is making sure the person receiving the gift is actually totally on board with this. This is something that they are aware of, something that you have talked about, and you can still do this in a fun surprise way if you'd like. If you know your recipient is responsible enough to take care of the pet, actually really wanting the pet, this is something that they would do regardless of the holiday or regardless of if you were financing it or however it shakes out, then it's something that you can consider. If this is something that you think would be super fun, but maybe they haven't expressed is an interest of theirs, if it's not something that you have discussed in detail together, or I often see people getting pets for their kids and then kind of expecting the kids to handle all of the work of taking care of the animal, then we may want to reconsider here. If your recipient has not even expressed wanting this animal, but you think it would be fun, a stuffed animal version could also be fun. And in regards to pets and children, generally my recommendation is that if they are under 18 and they are dependent on you, you are the primary caretaker of whatever animals are in the household. Yes, there are some older children especially that have their own jobs, and can handle taking care of a pet entirely on their own, but especially with younger kids, this is not always the case. So if you get a dog or a cat and your conditions are that your children must handle all of the feedings, all of the cleanings, all of the training, all of the walking, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure in the long run because, especially depending on how old the children are, those expectations might not be met. And if that's a breaking point for you, if that's something that you are unable to handle because of your living situation, because of your own workload, then I think it's best to reconsider. So now that we've kind of talked about reasons why it doesn't work out and things to consider before gifting pets, how should you actually gift it if this is a decision that you're still wanting to go through with and something that you know is going to work out and that you've had a conversation with your recipient about. I'm a really big fan of a basket of pet supplies or a little note telling the recipient what the plan is and then plans for the future. For example, if I was gifting my sister a puppy and this is something that I already knew that she was very interested in, I might gift a little basket with a collar, dog bowls, I might do a crate or a kennel, I might do some toys and I would have a note within that gift basket that has something along the lines of, I know that you're wanting to adopt a terrier mix, here's what you're gonna need and I'd love to go with you to the shelter and pay the adoption fee. This makes it super easy, it's less pressure the day of when you gift because if you hand over a live animal that changes the vibe of the entire rest of your evening and this helps to allow that person to be a little bit more prepared. So in this example, if my sister has already expressed that she is going to be getting a terrier mix. She's very interested in going to the shelter and picking one out. She's already making plans towards that. It might be fun to gift that adoption fee. No pressure, she can then go to the shelter. I might go with her to find a dog that's gonna work best for her lifestyle, find a temperament that's gonna work best for her, kind of figure out what is going to fit in with what she envisions most. And then if I'm so interested in gifting that as part of a present, I can pay the adoption fee. All other decisions were out of my hands and this helps to give much more of a responsible decision-making to the person who's actually going to have to be taking care of this animal. You can also go for smaller animals and I think goes double if you're dealing with children. Other than just gifting, you know, a goldfish in a bag, I think it's much more beneficial and much more responsible to maybe gift a fish tank and all the things you would need for this goldfish. And then together later you can go and you can pick out whichever goldfish is speaking most to them. There's some very pretty ones. I'm a big fan of verandas. This helps your recipient be as prepared as they can be for this. If it ends up, you know, very politely, hey, I don't want a fish, 
those things can still be returned and it's not at any detriment to a live animal. And it helps your recipient actually pick out an animal that they feel very connected to and something that's gonna fit their lifestyle. Like I said, this is a fairly controversial topic, so let me know in the comments down below whether or not you would gift a pet and in what circumstances. Have you ever been gifted a pet and how did that go? If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more content around pets, dog training, and pet nutrition. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!